I don't think I like where the John Campia show is going these days. Hey everyone, this is Kevin Rodriguez, film critic of iCritic.net and former producer of The John Campia Show. Now then, when I say former producer, just to be clear, I am not actually working directly on John's show. I was a producer on the YouTube membership page, which uh, that's the most money you can give them every month. And I like The John Campia Show. It's basically been part of my daily rotation since before the pandemic. And I'm going to admit, during the pandemic, it really helped me pass the time. And the show had consistently gotten better and better as the years went on. And I decided, you know what? I really like this. This has given me a lot of value and entertainment. And so I figured I would become a producer on the show to help keep doing what it is they were doing. And I also want to say that I have no issues with John himself personally. I'm not even going to say that I'm going to stop watching the John Campia show. I will probably continue to watch it, although it's going to be at a less frequent pace, which is one of the reasons why I dropped the membership. But I figured I should make this video because even though I don't want to be a drama channel, I don't want to talk about the dramas and personal lives of YouTubers and stuff like that, I think that's quite pointless. I do want to at least publicly voice concerns I'm having about the show. Because, you know, when someone commits to like, hey, I'm going to give this much money a month, and then they decide, you know what, you're heading in the wrong direction, I'm going to cut that back or I'm going to remove it completely, I think that person has a right to voice some concerns. So here's concern number one that I've had with the show. They stopped taking user emails. Now... In some cases, this didn't really affect the show that much, at least in theory it shouldn't have. I mean, the topics are still being brought up, whether or not a user or a viewer is writing an email. But the thing is, when viewers wrote in the emails, I thought it was really good for interactivity with the show. Fans could write in their questions, he would pick the questions, it kind of felt like the viewers had some control over the show, even though... John himself would ultimately pick the emails, he would pick the topics. He probably, in some cases, already had the topics in his mind. He just looked out for the perfect email. But there's been a couple times where he admits that he read an email, he dismissed it, and then it was kind of like, you know, actually, that was a pretty good question. Let's um, bring it up for a topic. And so I, I think that by taking away the viewer emails, that was a mistake. It certainly felt like something was missing when that happened. But that wasn't like a major, major reason to cut funding of the John Campia show. And it wasn't going to affect the show so much so that I wouldn't want to watch it. But then a lot of recent changes are happening. Probably there, well, I'll save that one for last. But one of the things that happened is that he got rid of or, well, actually, it's really unclear, but his assistant, Taylor, who you can follow on Twitter and his own YouTube channel at Fifty Shades of Tay with two Y's, abruptly left the show. Now, he released a statement saying that he's decided to bet on himself and work on his own channel and everything like that. I'm not saying I don't believe that, but he has maybe 2,000 subscribers. He has a little less than what I have and... I have enough subscribers and I'm not making a living on this channel. And for someone who needs to pay the bills and stuff, that seems like a really strange call to make. And it just got even weirder because before he left, John announced that he and the whole crew would be going to CinemaCon in Las Vegas. And Taylor apparently wasn't part of that group because he started a GoFundMe page to go to CinemaCon. And shortly afterwards, he's now no longer working on the show. And look, I'm not really here to get into whether or not John should be paying for his personal assistant to go to CinemaCon. He certainly doesn't have to. 
I'm also not going to comment on whether or not Taylor should have opened a gun GoFundMe to go to CinemaCon. That doesn't seem like the kind of thing that GoFundMe was really intended to do. And I don't know what this GoFundMe page had to do with Taylor leaving, if anything at all. But the whole situation, I will say, on both sides made me a little uncomfortable. I don't know why the whole crew is getting to go to CinemaCon, except for Taylor. And I don't like the fact that shortly after Taylor opens a GoFundMe page, then he's no longer working on the John Campia show. And by the way, there's a new girl in Taylor's chair helping out with the show, which suggests that John still needs the help. It's just Taylor's not there, and the whole thing just feels very, very weird. We also haven't seen Erin Cummings for a while, which in all fairness, that's because she actually is a professional actress, and she is probably busy, so I'm not going to hold that again against him or anything like that. But John then did announce and this was probably the big one, that Robert Meyer Burnett was stepping away from the show. He may appear occasionally, and what occasionally looks like, I have no idea. And he said he's going to sponsor Rob's channel, but Rob would no longer be a regular on the show. Now, I'm not going to sit here and say that John's explanation is not unreasonable. It isn't unreasonable. A lot of the afternoon shows were apparently costing money he didn't need to pay a full-time staff and so he was going to drop them all down to part-time now chris carr apparently is okay with that arrangement because she's still on that show but robert meyer burnett he apparently wasn't okay with it therefore they made a goodbye video and he's doing his own thing and all that jazz and look while I would try to struggle to figure out how a video was losing money, I mean, I guess I could understand how a video was losing money because even though it doesn't cost a lot to make those videos and do those live streams, you know, the Weekly Hero, things like that, you put them in front of a set and you just record, that's all it is. But they clearly weren't bringing in the views to justify paying his staff full time to make those shows. And so therefore he decided to cut back. Now, one thing I am not going to do in this video, I'm not gonna comment on purchases John would be making, nor his desire to retire in two to three years. I'm not even gonna say that John doesn't have the right to do what he's doing. It's his channel, he shakes things up once in a while, he can definitely do whatever he wants. But here's why I decided to stop giving him money, because these little changes are adding up. And losing Robert Meyer Burnett is a serious, serious loss to this show. You know, John and Rob just had a good chemistry. They, they really did bring out the best in one another. And I noticed something is just off when Rob is not there. And by the way, Chris Carr also brings something unique to the show. So then she's not there, her loss is felt. And I just feel like if money needed to be saved, this was probably not the right way to do it like per i mean i always it always bothers me and this has bothered me for companies for years and for all intents and purposes john is the ceo of his company but it always bothers me when companies when they need to start saving money or cutting costs they seem to always go for the employees first i don't look at how they can save in operations elsewhere as a producer who, well, as a, someone who was producing, who was giving not a life-changing amount of money, but a substantial amount of money every month because he enjoyed the show that much. If John were to make like a members-only live stream, and actually I would even make it like a producers-only um, live stream, you know, get the people who are giving the most money and say, hey, I have to start making some cuts. Here's where I'm thinking of cutting what do you think of cutting this or what do you think of cutting that? And I believe that he would have picked up really fast that there are other things he could be cutting before he starts cutting Rob and Tyler and 
some of these other cast members that we haven't seen for a while, like Amy and uh, uh, I don't think he hires Chris Harloff, but um, I think Chris comes on once in a while. Chris Harloff comes on once in a while. Because I think us producers, we would have said, look, we don't care about the studio. What you do doesn't need a studio. We are just as happy if it's in your garage or your basement. We don't care. We pay for the audio and the rants and the back and forth. Heck, I rarely even watch the videos. I mean, I'll turn it on YouTube and then I'm working. It's in the background. I'm not even watching it. I'm listening to it. And only occasionally when he says, show us this chart, um, you know, do you have to like stop and look over and like, oh, okay. But it bothers me that he's cutting out the people because the people are what make the show. And yeah, John will always be the main draw of the show, but you know, I mean, Roger Ebert may have been the most famous film critic, but after Gene Siskel died and he had rotating guests, it was fine, but it was never quite the same. And I, and the show has not felt the same for a while. I, I'm really missing some of these diverse opinions. I especially liked when they would get into disagreements and they would talk about things. So I did something that I, I really hate it when people do this to me. So I definitely did this and I had to swallow a big lump of pride. I made a comment on one of John's videos and said, look, I'm not going to be a producer on the show anymore. I don't like the direction the show is going. I think you're losing something special here, so I'm going to have to pull my support. And, you know, I know that's one of the douche things to do because you don't want people coming up and saying, hey, I'm unsubscribing because you're not doing it the way I like it. But since I was sending him money, I felt a little bit more justified, and I also don't think it's too late for him to turn this around. Now, I'm not going to include screenshots because it's ultimately not that important, but I have noticed that Campia's video views have gone down substantially. Um, so the so the hurt has been felt, as they say. Um, Rob's missing has been felt, and I think some of the lack of fan interaction has also been felt. I even, someone even said, and I don't know if this is true or not, but... Basically, now you can only comment in the chat if you're a YouTube member, like, you know, so base, so it's basically the only people who can talk to people on the show, the people who pay money. I mean, again, you're allowed to do that. I, I think that's a strange thing to do because a lot of people just aren't going to interact and that's going to hurt your YouTube number. So I'm still going to tune into the John Campia show once in a while, and I really hope that it comes around. I hope that... I can actually get to the point where I can financially support him again and send him some money. But I do not like the direction this channel is going. So I had to, I had to cut it. And um, I'm making this video because I wanted to express my, kind of my confusion into where this is all going. But that being said, what do you think? Did I make the right call here or am I making too much out of nothing? I'd love to know. Comment below, like, favorite, share, subscribe, and as always, Flame responsibly. Have a good one.